All right, for the second video for today, we are going to continue on with absolute power. And we're going to talk about attributes. Uh, these, aren't, these aren't your daddy's attributes. These aren't your strength, intelligence, wisdom. Was it uh, <laughs> constitution, de dexterity, charisma? No, these are your skills, your talents, your quirks, your superpowers, and all the little things that your character knows and can do. And let's take a look at them right now. I should probably present that first, huh? And then there. And of course, like, subscribe, and share, because we would like subscribe and share to you if you were talking about absolute power, maybe. Maybe so. But even if we didn't, even if we didn't, you should still give us money. Because everyone likes money. <laughs> Support us buying these PDFs and back. Oh, these right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you, you want to. You want to butter them up a little bit. Okay, fine. Uh, give us money so we can buy more stuff to have more content so you can watch some more so you can give us money. It's a wonderful circle of life, but it involves mostly your wallet and our time. Uh, Saigo, okay. so, uh, I actually want to mention that right now. So he mentioned, what did he say? He said, absolute power, you can make a character in about an hour or two and not be an algebra oh, master. That. Yeah, you, you, that's that's the problem I have with champions. But I like champions, don't get me wrong, as far as superhero games go. Actually, let me phrase it. I like the hero system. Because you, you can make whatever the heck it is you want. You just got to have the points for it. Same thing I like, but absolute power. Um, there's one ability in absolute power that I think mimics one in champions that I just despise, but I know it has to be there. It has to be there, but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see it here uh, probably in this chapter. Um, and it, and it's, the, it's basically the catch-all power. It's the what do you what do you guys call it for champions? It's the Green Lantern ring power, where you no, the just elemental control. Yeah, yeah well, whatever a ver or or variable power pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah variable it's stuff power pool. like that. Where it's like I just want a weird effect to happen that's not so bundled in a nice box. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But it's necessary. You have to have it. So, all right. Um, where are we? We are in chapter five now, I think. Yeah, attributes. Boom. Now, it's a really long chapter, but there's really only a couple pages we're going to read. And then we're going to look over a few of these abilities. Just a few. We are not looking over the entire list of abilities. If um, Here's what I'll do for you, though. Right now, if you want to pause it, I will. There's like the first half. You can see the name of all the powers and, and how much they cost. All right. Now we'll move down to... I guess we'll just do it right there. It's another one. You can pause it if you want to see all the names, lists. Go get all that. Look at all those pages. And then we'll end with the last few. Boom. There you go. Those are all the powers in the game, at least in this book. By the way, there are additional books to the game if you want to get them. Source books. A lot of companies do that. Oops. Let's read our intro here. Okay. The three stats from Chapter 4 represent your character's baseline abilities. More specialized aspects of your character are known as attributes, which can represent innate talents, learned skills, species traits, magical forces, psychic abilities, superpowers, technological enhancements, and more. It's basically everything your character can do. Uh, the, the stats are everything your character is. Attributes are everything your character can do. It's a simple way of looking at it. Attributes can also be added to equipment known as items, on page 91, or entities to create personal gear artifacts, vehicles, pets, and sidekicks, and we'll cover those later. There are a little bit different rules that come in to gear, because gear can be broken, gear can be stolen. One of the things that this game doesn't have compared to Champions is obvious and accessible focus, <laughs> which, again, I yeah. get why Champions does that, but it drives me nuts sometimes. Uh, so the amount of flexibility and customization provided by attributes is immense. You will probably spend more time poring over the attribute options for your character than any other stage of character creation. Palladium fans who are hanging out right now waiting for a heathen dog to get to Rifter number 10. Too bad. We'll get to that later. Uh, <laughs> you're going to find a, a, a large similarity in Palladium characters and best, I'm uh, sorry, uh, absolute power characters in that you're going to spend a lot of time making the character, but once you have it, that character sheet is, that's your book. You've got it all there. So m having it take a long time to make characters doesn't bother me as long as it's useful information. And you're going to have all the useful information for your character on the character sheet when you're done. 
and you're going to have the character that you want based on the amount of points that you were provided by your game master. So, uh, take your time, communicate free, frequently with your game master if you have any questions about how specific attributes will work in your upcoming game, or if the GM has any suggestions to guide your character development. Like every game ever in existence, the attributes here are a framework. They're going to tell you how they're used and what they can do, but you're going to... You're going to use your little noodle up here and try to be too imaginative and go outside the box. So the game master will have to tell you, you know what? I don't think it works that way. You know what? That's an interesting way of using that power. Let's go ahead with it. You know, so just know that, uh, that you can't, no game master can account. I'm sorry, the game master can't. No book can account for literally everything you can imagine. Since you've already spent a portion of your point total to assign stats and templates to your character, you can now use your remaining points to acquire attributes there are dozens of options presented here each representing a particular talent or special ability think carefully about the balance between a few high level attributes and a large number of low level attributes most attributes are rated in levels from one to ten but with gm permission and a solid character concept you can create your character with attribute levels beyond this threshold in particular, the GM may allow players to assign attributes with one or more enhancements exceeding the level 10 limit, since the effective functioning of the level of the attribute is lower. We will talk about enhancements. Enhancements, well, they confuse me sometimes. They might not confuse you necessarily. Uh, some people agree with me, some people don't. Enhancements lower the attribute level of of the ability it basically makes it a little less powerful because I think as we talked about last week, I hope I don't have this backward enhancements allow you to go wide where limiters allow you to go deep. So if you want more power in a limited aspect, if you want to go deeper, drill harder, shoot, shoot more penetratively. Is that a word? We're, we're going to call it one now. Then you want limiters to have that hyper focus so that you could go deeper. But if you want to have something that allows you to do more with it, to go wider, to have more functionality with it, it's not going to go as deep. So it's limited. Or actually, that's enhanced. Sorry. That's enhanced. Enhancement is wide. Limiter is deep. But they both give you a trade-off, an advantage and a disadvantage, depending on what you want with your character. The attribute descriptions may note when it may be appropriate for a character to exceed the recommended level limit. Attributes added to your character are combined with those gained through templates. For example, the first degree powerhouse template includes two levels of the tough attribute. If you now add an additional three levels of tough, the character's tough attribute is raised to level five. So remember, the templates are just like you know, old Star Wars D6. Folks, you know, you understand this. The templates are your starting point. From there, you can add on to it with the points that you have available. Enhancements and limiters. All right. Let's focus on this a little bit. Some attributes include options to modify the functionality of your character's ability beyond the baseline description. Modifications that provide an additional benefit or otherwise improve the attribute are called enhancements, while those that impose a drawback or weaken the impact of the attribute are called limiters. You can usually only assign each enhancement or limiter once to your character's attribute unless noted in the description. Although some modifiers are sufficiently beneficial or detrimental that they count for two, three, even four slots. Adding an enhancement to an attribute does not change its point cost, but it does decrease the effective functioning level of the attribute by one level. For example, the forest field attribute costs four points per level and provides an arm rating of 10 for each level. So right there, uh, does, okay. Adding the forest field attribute at... I was just going to do all this, but since it says it here, I'll just read it. <laughs> Adding the forest field attribute at level four, therefore costs 16 points and provides a substantial 40 armor rating. If you add the blocks teleport enhancement, so you're now giving it a feature that it didn't have, but uh, you add the block teleports enhance enhancement, no one will magically bypass your force field. The attribute still costs 16 points, since it's a level 4 attribute, but functions one level lower due to the extra advantage. Consequently, your level 4 force field now functions though it was level 3 and provides your character with 30 armor rating rather than the base 40. So you can either have 40, but things can teleport through it, or it can cost 30, but now things can't teleport through that. 
that's how that they all of that is level four and that's why when you see the uh the levels in on the character sheets they had the parentheses like it'd be four parentheses three because it acts as a level three power even though it is a level four power you nor uh, you cannot normally add enhancements if the effective level of the attribute would drop below level one yeah i mean you don't have a power anymore right conversely Adding a limiter to an attribute increases the effective functioning level by one level. For example, a level one force field costs four points, provides 10 points for armor. We talked about that before. If you add, so at this point, going back to baseline, it costs you 16 total points and you get 40 armor points, right? right. If you add both the, uh, I'm sorry, if you add the both directions limiter that stops weapons from firing both into and out of the force field, that means you put the force field around you, you can't use, you can't shoot. Yeah, it's a wall on both sides. Yes. Yeah. The attribute still costs four points, uh, since it's still a level one a attribute, but functions at one level higher. Okay, I'm sorry, I went with the last example. Um, yeah. So any anyway, so we'll read this through, and then I'll use it in comparison to the last example. I wish he would use the exact same example twice here. Um, should cost four points since it's a level one attribute, but functions at one level higher as though it's level two, which now provides 20 armor rating. So let's use the last one so we can stay with the same numbers, right? You had level four, which gave you four armor rating at a cost of 16 points. 40, 40 armor rating, right? For those same 60 points, you would now have a 50 armor rating, except that you wouldn't be able to shoot out of it. And that would be the limiter. So it actually bumps your armor up. And this is why we're talking about going deep instead of going wide. The level effectiveness of adding enhancements and limiters is cumulative. Expanding on the above examples, a level three force field that costs 12 points and provides 30 armor has three enhancements, blocks teleport, offensive, and regenerating, and two limiters, both directions and internal functions as though it was a level 2 force field with an armor rating of 20. The three enhancements decrease the effectiveness by three levels. So four, three, oh, so level 3, that would bring it down to level 0. Uh-oh, we got a problem. But the two limiters increase the effectiveness by two levels. Now we're back up to 1, 2. So that means overall it is a level 2. So cumul cumulatively, the effectiveness of the attribute is decreased by one level to be a level 2. The verbiage here is not the way I would do it. I would actually show the math personally, which he kind of tries to do. But uh, the last sentence I would say is like, you went from three to zero, back up to two, and so your effective level is two. And so you, uh, even though you paid 12 points for it as a rank three ability, level three ability, because of the enhancements and the limiters, it ended up being a rank two, but that shows how you can put all that stuff together. He's got three enhancements and two limiters and still has some armor. You can make the character you want. When reading a template or character entry, an effective level of an attribute may be provided in parentheses after the actual assigned attribute level. That's what we were talking about. Oh, here we go. He's got an example right here. Uh, attribute level uh, assigned attribute if it has enhancements and limiters. For example, the first degree inventor template lists the uh, power flux of the first, oh so if you're going off the template list the power flux as one and a parenthesis two which means the actual attribute level is one and costs 10 points it's a pretty expensive power but the effective level is two to account for the equipment liver he has to have a toolkit in order to use it that's a pretty big limiter because there are going to be times when you're without your toolkit hmm. so i get that more attribute customization. Although only a few attributes included in the list of enhancements and limiters with their descriptions, you can modify most attributes to align with your specific vision of your character's abilities. Chapter 6, Customization, details the additional enhancements and limiters that you can add to your character's attributes as desired. And hmm. there's a huge, huge list of them. All right. I'm trying this to figure out how to pronounce that in English. What? Custom me station. Customization? Well, instead of customization, well, yeah, and custom, instead of customization, like we'd say, it's customization. <laughs> customization. Station. Well, there's no T in there, though, or no T there. It's not station. Why not? How do you spell Plus, station? S T A T I O N. Oh, okay, okay. Station. Customization. Yeah. There it is. There you go. There Picking on the Canadians. Yep. They're gonna burn down the White House again. <laughs> Let them. <laughs> hmm. All right, uh, so 
we're not going to read through all of this here. Uh, it's just talking about the attribute entropy. Uh, Entries, not entropies. The attribute entries, uh, name, attribute cost. This is a uh, you know points per level. The relevant stat that it's based on. Attribute scope briefly summarizes the detail of the attributes descriptive text. Then we get the de uh, descriptive text progression. Level one, it tells you what level one, level two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera is. Uh, the first two entries establish a stat roll bonus is equal to twice. Here, let's zoom in on this. So, the first two entries, so level one, level two. Establish that the stat roll bonus is equal to twice the attribute level. Wait, what? This would be the twice the attribute, wouldn't it? Plus two stat roll bonus when no, it's no, just no, 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 no. It's it's not it's not plus two. It's it's plus two times the level. So he just didn't want to show enough lines so no. everyone would get the pattern. I got it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, attribute levels that have less intuitive progression, okay, uh, such as flight with speeds of 10, 30, 100, 300, or those that are more complex require more specific information, and we'll see that in the write up. Um, human attributes to tear. Uh, da, 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 da. Do we want to read this? Astro. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is, explains the asterisks. The range of human attributes included. Includes abilities that a normal human could have as well as some that are more appropriate for more than human characters or equipment. An asterisk next to a, an attribute on the table indicates a human attribute, one that is reasonable for an ordinary human to possess, at least at lower levels. If all player characters are supposed to be non-superpowered humans or human-level concepts, a GM may choose to limit characters to choosing only these attributes. All right, so you got it. Yeah, there, there are some things which are too fantastic for... A normal dude type campaign. flight. <laughs> yeah. You know, firing energy beams out of your eyeballs. Probably not going to be that. Way. No, normal human beings <laughs> do not fire lasers out of oh. their brains. Um, I don't want to be human anymore. Uh, all right. We'll skip all that. That usually does fake Iron Man. No, no, that's uh, that's not Iron Man. That's the uh, Iron Giant. Iron Giant. Oh, okay. Iron Only, something. Um, uh, Pride Day, Iron Giant. Pride day, what? Iron Giant was gray. Yeah, this you is gold. Yeah, this is Minnesota Gopher colors. There you go. <laughs> um, it makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so I want to go back to page forty-three real quickly. That's sixty-seven, forty-three, and so we're going to look at some we've got attack mastery, defense mastery, heightened awareness. Inspire. We already know what attack and defense mastery do. That's been described. Yeah. So heightened awareness. We'll take a look Heightened at awareness, that. It could be interesting. Yeah. Inspire, Mind Shield, and Skill Group is going to be covered no matter what because that's something that I have to, we have to look at. So, uh, so we got Inspire and Mind Shield. So let's do that first and then we'll hit Heathen Dogs because otherwise I'll forget. Okay. So we want to look up Inspire. They're in alphabetical order. Can I control F this? I-N-S-P. Oh my God, I cannot type. I-N-S-P-I. R E. Okay, well, there's 43 definitions of. Oh my God. Yep, so yep, the yep. No. There we go. It didn't take too long. It only took 10. Inspire. Okay, it's one point per level. So it's not the most powerful ability out there. Well, it's not expensive, at least. Let's see what it does. Yeah. Attribute scope is nearby targets. One dramatic scene. And the relevant stat is soul. This ability can represent. Oratorical? Is that the word? Okay, I didn't know that. Canadian yep. taught me something. This ability can represent oratorical talents. I thought we'd say oratory. Oh, whatever, I don't care. Innate charisma, supernatural awe, or even a beautiful or resonant voice. The characters are very present, inspires friends, followers, or fans, filling them with energy and determination to transcend their own normal limitations in pursuit of... It's cheerleader! Yep. Well, it's, it's leadership. It's a leadership ability. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Its nature depends on the character. A superhero, superheroic icon may motivate through positive reinforcement and impassioned action. A military commander inspires through leadership and strategic prowess or just suck it up, buttercup, get back out there. I didn't pay you to die. Keep or going. you're Skeletor and you say, do it or I'll, or I'll pull out your entrails. Okay. Well, th <laughs> that's the next one. An evil dictator might whip minions into a frenzy through hatred. A pop Wait. idol can inspire through song, a magical entity, entity, or mystical unicorn. Go to hell, Min May. I, I yeah, the, I, 
I agree. I hate Min May. I hate Min May. I hate Min May. Okay, moving on. A magical entity or a mystical unicorn may persuade followers through the sheer power of love. <laughs> there, there, oh my yeah, God. Right. Care Bear Share. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship is firepower. Um, uh, it is also common for certain items, such as religious relics, holy shrines, revered army standards, to possess this attribute. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, inspire to no, let's let's be honest. Mark has a big background in anime. It makes sense that he'd put that in here. And if you look at the tropes, yeah, we you know we might not like Minmay, but it happens in a lot of anime. It happens even in some of the more children oriented superhero cartoons so you know uh inspire takes general action to initiate during which the character must act appropriately given a passion speech start singing threaten minions with destruction or however the inspiration usually functions the character must make a successful average stat roll so a target number of 12 wait 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 Oh, no, you're on 2d6. Never mind, you're on 2d6. I was thinking it was 1d6 for a moment. Like, how is a normal human supposed to do that? 4 plus a d6, max out at 10? You can't, but no, it's 2d6. So 4 plus 7 is 11. Ooh, you got to get that 8. Okay. Uh, if it fails... Uh-oh. Wow, this is a long one. The character can take another action and try again, but is limited in the number of attempts per game section equal to the attribute level. So if you have a level three in this attribute, you can do it three times. And if you still fail, well, you had a bad session. Each successful use gives an effect that lasts for an entire dramatic scene. Whole During fight, this- picking that lock, uh, you know, arm wrestling, whatever. The whole, the whole, the whole relevant time lasts the whole time. Great. During that scene, every friend or ally who shares the character's goals and can reasonably be moved by the character's actions will be inspired. Alternatively, the character may define inspire as working through a skill group, most often business, social, street, military, or detective. The character makes a skill roll instead of a stat roll, which is usually easier since the skill level is added to the roll, but the inspiration will only work in appropriate situations. For example, when leading people into battle for military when making an important corporate move with business, or when instilling gang pride with street. Okay. Inspired characters, both player characters and NPCs under the GM's control, as well as the inspiring character himself, receive a bonus equal to the inspire level to any... Whoa, 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 whoa. The inspiring character gets the bonus too? Inspired characters, as well as the inspiring character, yes. That's freaking... Okay. You can talk yourself into it, man. You, yeah. you can talk yourself into doing better. That's awesome. You can do it. I believe in you looking in a mirror. I'm good enough. I'm <laughs> smart enough. And doggone it, people, people like me. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this inspire bonus does not apply to attack or defense roles, though. So it's, it's a non-combat ability, which I'm good with. Story characters will usually be highly motivated in ways the GM can reflect through role-playing. A, any character with Inspire also exerts a natural uplifting influence even without making a special effort. This helps friends and allies recover any lost energy points more rapidly as well. That's cool. That's a passive power too? Jesus. Yeah. All right. As long as, uh, as long as they're in the character's immediate presence, they will regain additional energy points each hour equal to the character's Inspire level. Okay, so it's not a lot, but hell, what one or two is... Then? Yeah. One or two is better. Now you're seeing why things are multiplied by five because you get stuff like this, which is, you know, because that doesn't say a multiplier. It just says no. says energy points. Each hour equal to the character's inspire level. The inspire, attri- uh, the inspire attribute do not... The Inspire attribute does not have a cumulative effect with the concurrent use of the character's Inspire attribute. Okay, I don't remember this from the Besom book, but I am going to say that this is an updated PDF. There are way too many typos in here. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Not, the 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 language aside, that could just be you know his writing style is different. But uh, the last week we found a couple. Uh, in the same sentence and so forth, uh, the PDF, if nothing else, the PDF should be updated. So right. I, I, okay. I have, I have to get, get some stuff, you know, right in my head about this power. Okay. So normally it's based off of a stat, which, which stat is it? Is it a soul? Soul. Soul. Okay. So it's based off the soul stat. So you would, it would, you roll 2d6 plus your soul stat. 
And as long as you get a 12 or higher, it's a success, right? Mm -hmm. And then everyone is inspired by the bonus equal to what level you have in inspire. So if you have a level one, everyone gets a plus one. If you have a level five, everyone gets a plus five. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I was feeding my cat. What? Okay. <laughs> and what, what, if you succeed, everyone gets a bonus equal to the level you have in inspire, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So if you have level four, everyone gets a plus four. Yes. To do this thing. Yes. Okay. Plus, plus four to the roll. All right. And but only for that scene and, and you know, only for, you know, the, yeah, got it, got it. And you can make it easier to succeed if you link it to a skill, but that limits when you can use this because you must, you must be able to logically use that skill for the inspire to function. That would be so, so that that's a specific designation. So yes. You yeah, can't you, use it. You, you cannot can. use it both ways. You can choose to use Inspire as a general inspiration or, or get it as a focus deal. Yes. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Here, here's the thing. Just get a soul of eight and use it as the general deal. Because if you get a soul of eight, the odds are you're going to roll a 12 or higher all the time and you're going to succeed and everyone's going to get a bonus for whatever the hell you want including you mm -hmm. so yeah never link it to a skill that just sounds dumb again again you're gamifying it and not looking at the character side of i, I know can but you know I, I, it, when, when I want to be captain america i i, I don't want to be you know uh captain therapy right i don't i don't, I don't want it to be so focused that I, that i can't inspire people all the time i want to inspire people all the time man if i'm an inspiring guy it's for all times if you're if you're a corporate leader, I don't know. Uh, I don't think you'd be a hero at that point. Hmm? Why not? What, why would you be a superhero if if uh, if if you can only inspire you got, people you, in corporate settings? That, that's uh, up to your backstory. You got a little Batman it, no, deal okay, going on. Okay. Here. Hey, you know what? You're you're Bruce Wayne. All right, fine. Okay. I don't think he has inspire though. <laughs> I think he has well, uninspire. Okay, well, as Bruce Wayne, maybe he has Inspire. Or, you know, he in, instead of using a skill, he uses money. As, as long as he flashes a whole bunch of money, he can inspire people. That works, too. The, sure. the, the point of that, and I mean, I understand where Heathen Dog's coming from with this, uh, is the way it's set up, though, is for you to be able to make the character of your choice. Now, if you want to make something that's very niche... You know, you're you're uh, you're a military officer who can only lead troops in battle. And outside of that, you're a failed you fail at everything. But man, can you lead some troops in battle? And that's the one thing you're good at. So you're now mercenary man or something like that. Sure. I could see you having it tied to the military skills and and, and yeah. so forth. Um, does that make but the if best? You don't have to. Don't don't do it. Just pro tip. Right, what was the other one? I forgot what the other one is. Mind something. Oh, it was the it was the mind shield one or mind something like that? Page forty three. My there's mind control. No mind shield. I think it was mind shield. Yep, that sounds about right. Okay, uh, one point per level, self only, but permanent. It's and it affects always the, on, always on. That's good. Affects the mindset. Character with mind shield is protected against psychic intrusion. This may be a reflection of his own psychic abilities, a protective spell, special training, or some innate knack. A character with Mind Shield can detect attempts to read his mind via telepathy or control his mind using mind control. Ooh, that's cool. And receive a bonus to resisting mind stat rolls as appropriate. Each Mind Shield attribute level also provides five points of mental armor that provides an armor rating against damage-affected inflicted sorry via weapon attribute with the psychic enhancement so if you've got oh, like a okay. psychic sword yeah. or a sound gun that that you know does uh, mental damage to people something like that for other defensive that attributes that work differently than mind shield see immutable nullify resilient and unaffected by the way this is something i really like you know we've, we've busted the books balls a few times but hey look at these other abilities as well I, I think that's cool. I, that's it for so yeah, mind no, shield that actually helps me because you know if if you take mind shield, you're looking at a more defensive build. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? Here are some more defensive powers for you. Yep, that's nice. But yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it it it, it doesn't just 
uh, block the the telepathy and all that stuff, but it also gives you mental armor. That's neat too, and it's on all the time. Costs nothing after you after you spend the power to you know points to get it. Obviously, but it, it costs no energy to do. It's on all the time. That's a good deal. Yep. Okay, um, we'll go into the ones you wanted to look at, and then because uh, yeah, then I've got a list one here. Of them was massive damage. Massive damage. Yeah. So that'd be under M. Uh, merge. Massive damage. All right. That's there. It is. So no relevant stat. Three points per level. So there you go. It's already costing three times what the other two we just looked at were. Yeah. It, uh, self only and permanent. That means it's again always oh, okay. on. You always have the ability to do massive damage. A character oh. with the massive damage attribute knows precisely how and where to hit an opponent in order to inflict incredible amounts of damage. All characters start with a base damage multiplier of five. Each level massive damage increases this by one. So there we go. It's definitely the multiplier. Yep. Naturally, the character's attack must be successful to inflict any damage. I sure. hate the fact that he has to put that sentence in there, but he has to what? put that sentence yep. in there. You know that. Physical strength is not the key to delivering massive damage in an attack. The ability to sense weakness is far more important. The capacity of massive damage to augment any kind of attack, melee, range, unarmed, metahuman, makes it very a very useful attribute for combat-oriented characters. For more information on physical combat damage, see page 183. Is that it? Okay, I, so just... hang on. Let, let's let's do this right here. So it's three per level. So to get a times to get a plus three to the multiplier, it'll take nine points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now the next one we're looking at is oh, hold super... on, we're not done yet. No, no, we're not done yet. It's not done? Okay. No, we have to look at limiters. Oh, okay. Carry on. Focus. Additional damage is only inflicted when the character uses one specific class of attack. For example, it might represent a special talent with a type of weapon, such as superpowered weapons, gun swords, bows, etc. Knowledge of a particular unarmed martial arts on our martial arts form, precision with natural weapons like claws and fangs, or the ability with a particular offensive attribute. Now, okay, now th this is really cool if you're if you are like a pugilist build or a yep. Wolverine type character, yep. and this this is almost no limit at all. It's just free money, right? So if you let's you, let's go with the Wolverine thing because people can visualize. So you got your claws, and you said what uh, massive damage three. Is that what you said a moment yeah. ago? Okay. Yeah. So for those nine points, you're still massive damage three, but you're taking the limiter with just those claws. You're doing now four times. You're adding four to the multiplier right. for that cost, but you can only do it with those claws. Right. Which, Targeted you know. damage. Additional damage is only afflicted when the character attacks a specific type of foe. For example, it might represent a divine metahuman who delivers extra damage against undead creatures, a galactic hunter who greatly understands the physiology of a particular alien species, a vigilante orphaned as a child who likes to beat on members of the gang that killed his family, or an android program to destroy competing AI with great efficiency, or second or, edition AD&D ranger or, who chose orc. Or terminators. Or term who get massive damage against only humans. There it is. And there you go. Okay, so uh, with without taking a limiter, let's just say we got nine points and we have plus three to multiplier. So now my damage multiplier is no longer five, it's eight. Eight, yep. Now we go to uh superhuman or, or supernatural strength, whichever one it was. The super strength can, one. Oh my god. Uh do 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 do, do M. I would type it in, but you know the word super is going to be in here a million it's times. It's going to be everywhere. So. Yeah, it's going to be everywhere. So, where are we? Projection. Sense. Okay, we're in the S's. That's good. Size. Wow. I don't ah, want to be on the. I don't want to be on the wrong side of his punch. <laughs> Jeez, oh Zeus, calm down, bro. <laughs> I know, right? I'm a Zeus, bro. Oh my god, I just watched that last <laughs> night. Uh, special movement, summon creatures, super sense. Okay, we're in the supers. Super strength. Is that what it was? Yeah. Eight points per there. level. Okay, well, there okay, you go. Okay, this is expensive. All right, all right. But let's see what it does. Okay, eight points per level, self-only, permanent, and relevant sure. stat is body. Understood. 
A character can lift approximately 20 to 30 kilograms times his body stat and freely maneuver about half that amount, but some characters are far stronger than the body stat indicates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This attribute can represent the muscular strength of a large or powerful non-human entity, a superpower ability, the hydraulic systems of robotics, muscles, and more. Each sure. level of super strength determines the maximum mass the character can lift and carry for short distances. Character super strength is independent of his body stat. Well, no. Real, but it says wait what? But it Hang says on, relevant status body. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to read on. When someone or something has super strength, strength moves beyond the stat scale. The body stat now represents fitness, durability, and agility rather than actual muscle. Thus, a player could create somebody with a body stat of two, but levels of super strength: clumsy, fragile, not a shape, but super strong. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That, that This is just uh, telling you you can customize by lowering your overall body stat and getting more points in super strength. You can actually, you know, have a really big guy who's clumsy as hell and, and you know, weak and whatever. He's just strong. That's his only thing. Well, let's see what it does to unarmed combat here. Each super strength level adds plus 10 damage to unarmed attacks, such as punches, kips, kicks, grappling, or body slams. The plus 10 damage bonus also applies to natural weapons of super strong animals or characters, including claws, bites, hooves, and gores. So go okay. back to Wolverine claws that we were just joking exactly. about. Wolverine ago. claws do that too. Now, got a question, and I it'll it probably be answered in combat, but it's very important for this scenario. Does that bonus come before or after the multiplier? I don't know. I am going to I assume after. I, I will I put money after. on after. Yes, I assume after. Okay. Yes, uh, I, I would put money on after. That'd be Here's crazy if that weapons. came before. Yep. Oh no, um, I get it. I get it. You're you're probably right. It's probably true. But the big thing I'm looking for is muscle weapons. Okay, muscle weapons. Each super strength level adds plus two to a character's damage multiplier. So there we go. That that pretty much answers it right here. This comes beforehand because it's multiplier. This just says plus 10 to damage. So this will be at the end. Okay. And this multiplier is to the multiplier. Multiplier, though, is not at the end. So, so each super strength level adds plus two to the character's damage multiplier when using normal melee and thrown weapons, as well as when using weapon attacks with the muscle enhancement. If a weapon attribute is defined as a form of unarmed combat as well, the plus 10 damage bonus described above does not also apply. The character only receives the plus 2 damage multiplier bonus. Okay, so I I'm, I'm having trouble with that one. So you if you've got if you've got your um uh well, let's see hold on here. Uh, I don't know if it if it would affect the the claws or not. Let's just say for the sake of argument, let's not say claws, you're punching. And you have okay. all of this, right? You do okay. your normal damage. You do not get the plus 10 also. You will get your multiplier, but you won't get the plus 10 also on top of that. Basically, you don't get the double dip. Okay, got it. So uh, each super strength level adds plus two to your weapon when using normal melee and thrown weapons, yep. as well as when using weapon attacks with the muscle enhancement. Uh, if such a weapon attribute is is defined as a form of unarmed combat as well, the plus ten damage bonus. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So, okay. So, uh, if you're just going for straight up damage, then it'd be more effective just to get the the damage multiplier bonus. Yes. Yeah, because this costs what eight per level. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. So, to to get a plus five multiplier getting one of these and three of the of the damage increases that would cost 17 points that seems really small for so but but let's look at what you get damage. down here at just level three let's continue on level three you can lift up 10 tons okay okay so you might want to get this just to also be able to lift you know because do you lift bro yeah i do I have, I have super, <laughs> right. I, lift. I lift bro. So if you spend 17 points to get this to level one, you can get times 10 damage multiplier and lift 500 kilograms. You can lift a horse above your head. 17, 17 points. Oh, you're talking about with both attributes. Okay. Yes, so the, the other attribute at, at to three and this attribute at one. Exactly right. Yeah. Yes. That's nine plus eight. That's 17. So for 17 measly points, you can double your damage on everything and 
you're also su- super strong throwing around horses and I imagine Vespas just for funsies. I mean, if you're now, looking for strict damage, sure, yeah. Yeah, and if, if you want to go a little higher, you go 24 points and you're throwing around trucks and, and you've got a, uh, a plus seven to your multiplier, so it's times 12 damage for, for 24 points. You can throw around trucks and have them do times 12 damage. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So making making us a, a super strong character in this game is not hard. Is not hard. At all. That's just wanted to see it. All right. I but I mean, 10. I know why this one costs so much because each level gives you so much lifting power. <laughs> so much lifting power. I mean, a level five, you're lifting a house. I know, right? 250 tons. That's that's you know. Yeah, man, that's that's anything that's not bolted down, basically. All right. Um. Okay, yeah, that, that was it for that one. Let's see. So we're going to look at some of the weird ones now and see if we can figure them out. Page 103. Is that PDF or is that real book page? Plant control. Okay, so should be right. Power flux. Is it long? Enhance. Oh, God, it's long. It's very long. Oh, Jesus, it's long. But it needs to be long. Ugh. Yeah. So uh, this is one of the Ten weird point. ones. It's one of the weird ones. Uh, yeah, we'll zoom in. Power flux represents extensive control over a minor element, ideology, natural phenomenon, or sphere of influence. It is often used to represent divine, elemental, or improvised magical powers or powerful high-tech item. At high levels, the character holds mastery over a particular realm and has an intimate understanding of all things related to the attribute sphere. Examples of minor categories over which the character has control includes a classical element such as water, fire, wind, earth, a limited concept or idea, lust, protection, charm, pride, a minor aspect of nature, temperature, friction, insects, sunlight, clouds, sea creatures, or a limited sphere of influence. Keys, silence, cats, Writing guns, a small locality, nutrition. I have magical powers over nutrition. You can make hey. people healthy. Oops. Or not. Or not, yeah. I have given you cholesterol. I'm cholesterol <laughs> man. You uh, now have is... a pla- you now have severe anemia. No. no. Sickle cell. Um oh, this no. is a very open at- ended attribute and should be discussed with the GM at length to determine the effects and limitations in the game. This is the like I said, this is the power that I hate. But yeah, it is one hundred percent necessary. That he definitely does hate because you, you know, something like having control over the idea of friction. You know what? You know what a really both intelligent and vindictive player can do with that? Destroy the planet. Cause well, chaos in a in a hundred yard area, complete and utter chaos. Yeah, have everybody slipping all over themselves or stuck? Well, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, uh, everything just dis- depends on friction to function. Everything. If you if you remove friction from an area, you stop things from working. If it has moving parts, it's going to break itself. Or you just invented perpetual motion machine. You better stick to it, though. Uh, so uh, proper use of power flux will not unbalance the game, but rather can provide many opportunities for character innovation. It requires a good game master. Like, again, I want to say yeah. this, that while I don't like the power, it is 100% necessary. This is the, and, and again, this is the example other people have used around me to try to get it in my brain as to why it works. This is the uh, Green Lantern power ring thing. I just want it to do something. I, I I don't know what Green Lantern's power is, what what he can has direct control over, but apparently the color green or some crap. No, it's it it's basically willpower energy. Okay, so there we go. I I have I can make a big fist come out of my ring and you know, whatever my my big bees people. grasping hand. What what's that? And beat on people. I don't know if it's this this power seems different. It seems more godlike. Because you have you have power over things that are concepts as well. 
Yeah, but it's going to be limited. When your level is really low, it's going to be limited. Well, Even yeah, we know beginning. Really low, but sooner or later, you're you're going to you know get into demigod territory pretty easily. Well, actually, no. I think this is the one that uh, was the one I didn't like. I don't know dynamic powers. Yeah, but, I think the dynamic power is one you look so, for. As an alternative, uh, so here here's the thing. Just with me, just so people understand, I'm not complaining about the game. For me, I like to have focus. I like to know what my powers do. It can do anything. Yeah. Ah, I, I don't like that. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, hello, I want this game, but it's uh, too expensive for my wallet. Spoiled by Palladium prices. That's fair. That's I fair. Also, it. remember yeah, that he's shipping from Canada too, so that makes it more so difficult it for him. more for people in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. that's the way it is. Uh, alternative power options to, to this power are dynamic powers, power variation, and transmute attributes. Yes. I mean, uh, this one seems, you know, ugh. I have a, I have a feeling that dynamic power variation and transmute are not going to deal with concepts. They're going to deal with physical things. And, and, and for practice. example, if you don't like concepts as a game master, just say no. Yeah. Just say, no, you can't do that. It, it, this, this is said right at the beginning of this power, or actually says right here, should be discussed with the uh, GM at length. Didn't even just say, hey, you know, in passing, it, it says no, at, at length. length because, you know, any of these could be game unbalancing. Like, oh, no, no, I want to I want to have control over the power of desire. And mm -hmm. if you don't speak about it at length, you're like, OK, whatever. Doesn't sound too bad. You can make people do anything or make them do nothing that's great especially if you're a bad guy if you're a robber cops come no they don't they they have absolutely zero desire to arrest you and they go away i mean what the hell i miss mr nimbus <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why did i watch that episode last night <laughs> Yeah, but but I mean that's honestly that's a perfect representation of this. When the cops come for people who watch Rick and Morty, you might know the episode. If you don't, well, uh, you, you got ten seconds where you can zone up for a second. Um, when Mister Nimbus is there and they call the cops on him, he's like, "I'm Mister Nimbus. I control the cops." And he's like, I, "What what does he tell them to do?" It's like, uh, I forget. It's, it's something. Then it's like make out with each other or something, yeah, or shoot like, each yeah, other. Then it's, then it's have sex up, and then it's go away, and they literally just do what he says. Exactly, because right? he's got generic power over <laughs> over, over people's desire. Exactly. So if you have, you know, is uh, especially if you're facing average opponents, you're probably going to overwhelm them with an average level of power in this power, and then you're just going to win. All right, let's uh, let's go on here. A character with this attribute has a group of reserved character points called flux points that can be allocated to different attributes as often as once a minute or once each dramatic scene, as determined by the game master. So you can you can enhance your other attributes. Okay, I, I got to know how that works okay. within the thematic category chosen by the player. So if you have an attribute of charm, I don't know if that is one, but let's just go with it. I'm not looking everything up here or persuasion or whatever because we're and then you also have the flux power of desire you can add this to your charm ability yes wow this often represents a broad-based magical or psionic ability but it can also reflect a character who has several different powered forms or a character who has little control over a range of attributes Okay, in conjunction with the unpredictable limiter, I, no, just I don't even like the sound of that. One. No, it sounds bad. Don't do it. Uh, stats and defects cannot be raised or lowered with power flux. Okay, okay you have to good. you have to you have to increase or decrease attributes, attributes themselves, not not limiters or defects. Okay, got it. Fluxing some attributes may require GM permission. Literally everything in the game requires GM permission, but I get what he's saying here. Every level of this attribute provides the character with five flux points. So if you have level two of the flux power, you get 10 flux points. Sure. The character makes a successful stat roll. You can assign flux points to one or more attributes that grant powers that fit within the thematic category. A flux point is... So you still have to make a roll to even make it work. Right, right. You have to make, you have to okay. make a roll to make it work. But once you do, you get all those points... That grant powers that fit within the thematic, even a power you don't have, you can get it 
up to 10 points. Yep. The fuck? And Michael Connor, the thing is, is Champions has the same type of power. I know we were we were talking about characters years ago. Champions has the exact same type of, it maybe uses different verbiage or something in there, but where there's a multi power or variable power yeah. pools or whatever that nonsense is, it has the same concept. This one just puts it into a specific attribute. So, um, under normal circumstances, power flux cannot be allocated to companion dynamic power item, power variation, skill group, or transfer abilities. Yes, if you knew, especially with items, which I do kind of understand off the cuff here, uh, that that. would make them so OP. Oh, yeah. Because they're like half the points. So, um, it gives a good example here. We're not going to go into it. We're spending a lot of time on this. I'm actually, I was going to it first, but I am not even going to look at the enhancements no. and, and no, limiters. No, 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 that's no, no, no. This, this, this thing is way too powerful to begin with. Uh, is especially if you're new to uh, to this game. Yeah. Do not, do not let no. Don't. Yeah, for advanced players, go for it. But yeah, yeah, but no. Otherwise, no. Don't, don't do this because this all you good. need is one smart ass player. And your your entire adventure is boned. Like I said, I completely understand why it's in the game. Yeah. Um, oh, it's another long one. Well, you item know, is item. You know, I mean, it, it can be anything. You're you're buying it. And hold on a I, second. I imagine if you're buying it with points, it's uh. Oops. What happened? No, I no, I, I want I want to be here because I I thought there's a chapter on items. Okay, uh, if, if you're buying them with 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 points. And it and they can be stolen. I'm sure they're worth more, so you can get more more power if something can can be stolen from you. Okay, I'm skipping items because there's an entire chapter on it we're going to cover in the future. Um, okay. The main thing to know about items is it costs half the points basically because they can be broken, taken away. However, oh, okay, items okay, that okay. you pay points for should not be gone forever because the right. character did pay points for them. You shouldn't be screwing them over every adventure. The concept. No, I, I would imagine. I would imagine that that if the item is broken, stolen, or whatever, you can either one get it back or two make another one. Right? It just you're without it for a while. That makes sense. You're without it for a time. I get it. But uh, spending points on items normally, I would say, is stupid. Don't ever do it. But if you're getting double the effect, then that's that that that's that's something you might be able to deal with. You know, like like a. Uh, like if if you have a if you have a, a special uh, belt, little Hercules belt that 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 gives you you know super strength, but you can get double the super strength for half the price. I mean, that sounds great, right? I mean, it sounds great. Someone could take your belt. Well, yeah, but I'll get another one. Uh, else, if you do lose it permanently, you're supposed to get the points back. Okay. Uh, and then unique attribute this is the last one we're looking at it costs anywhere between one and ten points per level (laughs) everything about it is variable it's unique this attribute covers any and all powers and special abilities not detailed in the rules often one single character point in a unique attribute is sufficient to give the character a flavor but more points can be allocated to enhance the effects on gameplay and must be added if the attribute would be considerable benefit Discuss the attribute with the GM to determine what specific game effects the unique attribute possesses. Uh, up front, I will tell you that no game can cover every little power imaginable that you want to think of. With that said, you're going to be hard pressed to find one that's not here. Yeah. So, but this is the catch-all. Uh, the GM should assign a point cost per level based on how the attribute compares to other attributes and how useful it is. An attribute that is somewhat useful in the game should cost one point per level. One that's very useful should be two to three points. One that's extremely useful should cost four to five points. And one that's exceptionally powerful and useful should cost six to ten points per level. Basically, sure. how bad is it going to break your game? <laughs> there you go. Note that many unique attributes can be adequately described as a feature or a new combat technique or by adding enhancements and limiters to existing attributes to customize them. Yeah. So that, that, that last paragraph is just so, hey, if you're thinking about using this power, see if you can adjust a, an existing power to fit the, 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 the player's idea before using this power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the The idea in here is uh, one of the things that maybe it should say, and this isn't a, a, a negative on on Mark or anything, but maybe like this is this is the uh, attribute of last resort. If literally nothing else fits, and there's no mathematical way of making uh, uh, 
enhancements and limiters do what you want then do this so that that's why i wanted to cover this no i did not cover normal things that is true i didn't look at uh, tunneling you know you got your character can burrow or transmute you know whatever um tough we didn't look at we don't have the time to look at all of them tough I, and weak they're plus 10 hit points minus 10 hit points it's not hard uh, telekinesis, taunt. I mean, these are all things you can figure out. Swarm, you get the idea. But I wanted to look over the really weird ones because to let you know that, once again, you can make the character you want to make. As long as the Game Master gives you enough points, you can make the character you want to make. Now, I want to go right to the end here. And then I think we'll wrap this up with some comments. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, that's another power, power, power. Attributes. Oh, the, uh, these are limiters. Oh, yeah, these are the limiters. I probably... We're going to gloss over them. We're not going to look at our enhancements. You can be accurate. Uh, what's anemic? Is that supposed to be anemic? I think it's Counts supposed to be anemic. Uh, the weapon saps the victim's ability to make forceful... Yeah, you're making somebody anemic. It's, do Canadians spell that one different, too? I didn't know I that. I guess so. An okay. Anemic. Anemic. Or, uh, auto fire, blight demoralized contagious so these are things that you can add to the power to give them enhanced effect but that's going to lower the level of the power remember and then uh drain flexible where are the limiters did i miss it demoralized contact light nope these are all do, 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 do. inconspicuous that's a good one for items right yeah sure if they can be taken but can't be found then it can't be taken Quake. A quake weapon creates a linear shockwave in the ground. Wow, that's cool. Stun, tangle, vampiric. Limiters. Here we go. Alternate munition. This is a special type of limiter usually associated, uh, usually only assigned items. Some weapons are designed to fire different types of ammunition. So that means you have to get the right type of ammunition for it. Right. Exclusive, fieldless hands. Ingest the weapon, usually poisonous liquid power. Oh, so the person actually has to ingest it. So you can't just say pew pew, uh, you know, I got him. Nope. Uh, so the good news is that's going to make it more powerful, but you got to get them to drink it. Stoppable, toxic, unique, unreliable. Un anytime an unreliable weapon is used and the attack roll results in an unmodified or natural 2, 1-1, one, one, the attack fails to take place and the weapon burns out, jams, overheats, otherwise malfunctions. Okay, hi, hi, hi. boxcars are what? 3% uh, chance, if I remember? Or not box, that's 1-1, one one, but it's... It's a three percent chance for snake that? eyes. Yeah, I can't remember. But what the there's more. It says that's what. What's assignments? Uh, for two assignments, okay. So you apply the the limiter twice. An oh, okay, unmodified okay, roll. It. So that means you'd increase the level to two points, but uh, an unmodified roll of two or three produces the same results. And for three, two, three, or four, yeah, don't do that. You're gonna that's no. gonna happen all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I I I would find if you're really pinching your points, getting one yeah. one level of unreliable is probably okay. It's probably all right if you're really if you're really pinching. But more than one, no, don't do that. Uh, again, it's it's something to put in there to give your item ability whatever some quirks and to give you more points ultimately i know a lot of people because it's a point-based game it's all about the min maxing yada yada but really it's about making the character you want to make if you have an idea for a character even if it isn't the perfect point total that's that's okay you can make the character in the game as long as you don't make them so against type against you know whatever he can't do anything but i think with the tri set system it's really hard to make a character like that character is going to be effective at something you spent the point somehow <laughs> like so but uh modular character design that is true and there's a little story and then next week we are going to uh attribute customization we're going to talk more about enhancements and uh where is it uh yeah we're going to talk more about the enhancements and limiters next week and you're not here next week right so with heathen dog not here next week i know the first one is pretty quick the second one chapter seven is going to be pretty long and i don't know if that's i didn't write a note down here whether that's a wall of text or whether it just has a lot of options but we'll find out next week so we're gonna cover chapter six and chapter seven next week sweet all right what kind all of right, comments we do we have um 
We go. Psy Ghost said, uh, "Absolute power. You can make a character in about an hour or two and not be an algebra master." Yes, there is some there 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 is math involved, but it's adding or subtracting in steps of one, for for the most part. So it's there's no fractions. There, there's no there's no di- you know divide by zero nonsense going on. N- none of that crap. So yes, it is it is far easier than something like Champions. And then we have. Uh, uh Malachi saying uh well if you want to make green lantern the power ring is an item and it can be stolen it has been in the past <laughs> so yeah i mean and, and that's the thing about about green lantern is uh if if you have it as an item as a ring and you you limit it down one to say it's it's uh inobvious or whatever so people won't see it or think it you get double the power d- double the points because it's an item doing the thing so you get double the points in powers that that can get out of hand pretty quick so you got to really really look at, at 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 players who are who are really really trying to squeeze blood from a stone are are they doing it for noble reasons or are they doing it just to just to min max themselves into demigodhood i don't know so so for for the sake of argument i'm i don't really generally appreciate min maxing like some other people do i like characters i like viable characters that are characters that make sense not just follow the numbers however even mark said at the beginning of this book that hey it doesn't matter if you're a min max or story game or whatever you know you play how you want for your table just make sure it's right for the table if somebody comes to my table now to be fair chance of me running a superhero game are very low but somebody were to come to my table with pure min max stats uh you know what? I I might be questioning. You know what's going on here? Why aren't you making a character that that fits a theme or an idea? Well, because a lot of times in my mind, the min max characters are just they're trying to win at role playing games, right? At the same yeah. time, do you want to gimp yourself? You know, there's a better way to do this. Why not go that route? So it really depends on what it is that you're trying to achieve at the table. I like themed characters, which is why I like the champion system uh, outside the variable power pools and why I like the Bessem system, because I can make the character that I want for that table. And yes, I've had people, Hindog did it with my champions characters. Like, uh, why'd you do it this way? I mean, you could have done the other way because because this way makes sense for my character. My character was a uh, uh, the, the Necron that had the goo gun. Yeah, the goo gun. It had a had a he had, he had a he had a goo gun with 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 like at least three settings on it. He could fire. Yeah, it was a, goo it was a shoulder mounted thing that uh, yeah. that I'd, but it had glue. It had acid, and I forget what one of the other ones was. Yeah, so I could. Acid I could, and damn it, I don't remember. And I I look I don't table. have that. Was it? Well, I thought that was the goo gun. Got no, the glue. The, the, the the uh, glue one stuck you to something but yes. you know only from where you were touching something else you know but there was another one that actually entangled the person so they couldn't move at all i believe the, the glue gun by the way is based off of i think it was vortex from the combaticons from transformers he had a glue gun i'm like that's the coolest thing ever one day i'm gonna have a character that has that then you guys ran that champions game it's like oh <laughs> i got a glue gun yay yeah. so but uh yeah uh, so, so anyway the, the the point is is play the game play as your game master and table wants if you're if you're like me and don't like to min max but it's a min maxing table you gotta bite you you know help me with my character help me min max this a little bit better if you're at a table that you're playing superhero characters that have viable abilities and you come in there like no 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 no, hold on i gotta figure this out stop stressing just make the character with the points and the powers that you can see don't make everybody's life a pain in the ass yeah so. That's about it. And you know, for you know, it's funny. I don't like superhero games in general or superhero concept in general. It's again, I'm not against it. It's just not my cup of tea. But I had fun in Champions. I had fun in Heroes Unlimited. I had fun. What? Uh, did I play any other ones? Oh, yeah, uh, Marvel. Uh, if yeah. the face rip, I had fun in that as well. So you can, yeah, I've had fun in all those games. Yeah. If you want a champion style character creation with a easier game system. It's just two d six plus modifiers. And less math. Then, yeah, absolutely less math. Uh, then, uh, I keep on to say Bessem. Absolute power. What we're covering right now is the game uh, for you. They're both good. Nothing wrong with them. And please like, subscribe, and share. We are going to do more absolute power next week. But it still helps if you're if you're interested in absolute power or the other games. Man, we got so many games out there that we've covered, and so many more to come. Uh, do that, do that, subscribe if you're not already. Like the video. And you know what really helps? 
what's been really helping i've been finding out uh recently comments man even if the comment is just like what bane's been doing just give me the thumbs up and an american flag i guess <laughs> you know uh it, just leave a comment that that really does help out the videos and you know if you're going to bed at night and the tablet's just sitting there just just play them just put them on a loop get a playlist put them on a loop go to sleep you don't let it charge while you're doing it it's okay <laughs> give us that watch time there it is. with that i hope you all have a great day <laughs>